What's up everybody? Squat every day 3.0. So if you followed 1.0 and 2.0, I'm gonna change it up for you right here. So we're gonna add in band tension. Now, a lot of people have seen band tension made famous through Westside Barbell, which is where I learned a lot of my stuff at. And so there's multiple kinds of bands. I know we're, we're not talking about the tubing that your grandma got from rehab. We're talking about real band tension that ranges from 100 pounds up to 200 pounds against the barbell. Now, you're, having, you're gonna say, now where do I get the bands at? How do I set them up? I got you. I'm gonna set it all up right now. We got what's called the light band, which is the purple band, which like I said, you can buy these at Westside Barbell. We got the medium band, which is the green band. And then we got the monster mini, which is black. And you can use these for multiple different things. Now I'm gonna tell you how we're gonna set them up in the program. We're gonna use week one, light band, which adds 70 to 100 pounds of pressure. Week two, medium band, which adds up to 150 pounds of pressure. And week three is gonna be the medium plus the monster, which gets you close to 200. Now, keep in mind, that's before you load the barbell. That's just with the barbell and the bands. Now you're asking, how would I know what the band tension is? I'll show you because of the, the length of the loop at the bottom when I show you how to set them up has already been measured multiple times by the guys at Westside. So they've told me that's roughly the amount. Now, it also depends on how tall you are and I could change a few things, but I'll give you the, the ski low and all that. So what we're gonna do is alternate front squat and back squat, real simple. Monday, front squat, no belt, still keeping with the pause. Tuesday, back squat, no belt, keeping with the pause. Wednesday, front squat, belt with a pause. Thursday, back squat, belt with a pause. And then Friday, we gangster it out. We go back squat, belt, and wraps. Now, each week, you're, in you're intensifying the same format, which is a daily conjugate, which is changing just a little bit of the squat on a day-to-day -day basis at a max effort against the band tension. On Saturday and Sunday, we're just using the front squat and back squat about 70% just to kind of get it moving. Now, what will happen in this three-week wave is you're going to get so used to fighting against position, against the bands over this three weeks that when you take these bands off, you feel like a daggone freak. And that's the whole key is we want to make sure that it's that big of a change. Now, keep in mind, after we do the front squat, no belt pause, we're gonna roll right into continuing on the bench most days, right into the flat bench, right into rows, and then we're gonna add some arms, okay? On Tuesdays, we'll go the back squat, no belt pause, then we're gonna go into the high rep, incline, GHDs, lower back, lunges. On Wednesday, we're gonna start adding more shoulder work in, which I didn't have in 2.0. We'll go the front squat. We're gonna do some push presses. We're gonna work on some Arnold presses, shrugs, a little bit of bodybuilding moves, and then finish off with some conditioning for lower back and abs. Thursday, back squat. We're gonna work on a flat bench against monster minis, or minis depending on the week, and I'll explain that. We're gonna hit some more arms and some lunges. And then Friday, the gangstered out, back squat, belt, pause, more shoulders, more work. So I'm up in the intensity, on all the stuff so you can feel like you're getting some good hypertrophy work also. On the weekends, really, all I'm concerned about is you getting the bar, getting under the bar, front and back squat, and doing a little bit of lower back conditioning. Now, a couple updates on the lifts. Before I did this plan, I was hitting 405 for probably a triple with a narrow stance. After I went through this three-week wave, I hit it for eight reps with wraps. Now, that's a pretty considerable difference. Now, in my powerlifting meet, <clears throat> I did a non-sanctioned meet, I squatted 550, bench 350 on a pause, and pull 575 sumo. I train in all mostly all narrow stances, but when I compete, I usually widen out so I can support more load. But just to go to show that this plan, especially in these three weeks, worked well. Now, if you jump from not doing anything squat every day wise into this, it's gonna be a huge shocker. I would recommend at least going through phase one or two, if not both, previous to hitting this up. Now what I want to go over is some of the uh, usual, uh, I guess, tools you need for this whole thing in general. One, we got the Olympic shoes, which I think is big. You got, your, you got your heeled shoe that helps your positioning whenever you're squatting, it helps you get in the proper positions. Two, 
Some of the prescription has a belt, so you need you a real belt. Not the belt at the gym that looks like it's been laying there for 20 years and has no support. Buy a real belt, like from Elite FTS or Rogue or something that's 10 to 13 millimeter, something that's got some pop to it. Some, some of the prescription calls for knee wraps. So you can go with uh, Mark Bell's uh, knee wraps from Slingshot, or these are Enzer Predators, Predators, right? Predator wraps, Gripper. grippers, Enzer grippers. They're ridiculous, I like these a lot. Also, I recommend knee sleeves. For the days that you don't have um, any wraps prescribed, or just in general, they just they don't give you no pop, they just keep you warm. These are the Mark Bell Slingshots, and we also use the Rebands, the, blue, the light blue ones. So they just keep your knees warm in general. So a lot of people ask me like, do you, do, do you use wraps or sleeves? I use both. And sleeves almost every day just because you want to keep your knees warm. Um, for front squats, especially against these bands, having some type of wrist wraps is pretty helpful. I jacked up my wrist on some cleans, and so this was a huge, a huge helper for me while I was going through front squats. The bands, like I said once again, you've got your light band, your medium band, and your monster mini. Now, you're saying, do I have to buy all this stuff to do this plan? This is pretty advanced shit. So if you're all in, you're all in. So could you just buy the bands and not the wrist wraps or the belt? Sure, could you do your best? Or you could just over time invest in some of these things and utilize them. But what I'm saying is I dramatically changed my strength, which I had already changed a lot of strength. I mean, when I started squatting every day, my deep squat was like 335, 350 into a catcher stance, and now it's like, close to 500 pounds. I mean, it's a pretty dramatic change. And so it's worth the investment if you're gonna squat every day because this is the baseline of your whole program. So now what I wanna do is go over how do we actually set up the bands? Because <clears throat> you're probably saying to yourself, why well, work out at a commercial gym? Or I'm a CrossFitter, I go to the box. How the hell, I don't have a monolith like I see on YouTube at Westside or at your old school gym. How do I set these bands up? I knew you were gonna ask that, so I got you set up right here. So. We got our regular rack right here. What you're gonna wanna do is set up, the best way to do it is go a 90 and a 100 pound dumbbell back to back. Now, what I talked about how you understand to get the proper pressure, because I have a lot of people that will set their bands up around a dumbbell on one loop. And what happens is one loop will give you a little bit of tension, but not very much. Not what the prescribed tension is really uh, when you read about the West Side Method. What we want to do is go around both dumbbells, which gives you the proper size loop, which would be like around, at West Side they got the monolith, which is about the size of one dumbbell plus some uh, two by fours. At Old School we use the monolith plus a 100 pound dumbbell. And so if you get the proper size loop like that, then you're going to have the true band tension and then you're going to put it up on the rack. You want to put it all the way up against the collar. Now if you notice, I have the dumbbell set kind of diagonal against the angle iron right here. Every squat rack might be a hair different, and so you're gonna wanna start with the light bands anyway, because that's week one, and figure out which feels the best. <clears throat> now I'll set up the other one, same way. Now the other thing is, before you take a squat, once you get these set up, figure out if they're even. And the way you do that is if you get up under the bar and one feels like it's uh, heavier than the other, you can adjust it right here. This is something nobody ever teaches you. If you go down, it'll loosen the tension up a little bit. If you go up, it'll tighten it up a little bit. And so that'll be one thing is that you're going to want to make sure and test it out before you take a squat. So whenever you get up under the bar, you got to stay tight. The other thing is if you do not trap this bar on your back, it will it'll send your ass into the ground and you'll lose the bar and it could get it could get real bad for you. So this is definitely an advanced thing. You gotta stay tight. So whatever you set up, you're gonna set up, get tight, like I said, take it out. So like when I took it out, this right side feels a little extra heavy. So I'm gonna come down here and adjust the band, bring it down a little bit, and then I'll retry it again. Back up under it, get tight. Now it feels more normal. I'll take a mini step back. Like I said, the band pressure is between 70 to 100. I'll come down into a squat with a pause, head up, pause, and then shoot through the bands. Now, if you'll notice, the bands will you know, constantly work against your body. So what you gotta do is, you have to stabilize that band at such a high level 
that the body's constantly working. And what you'll notice is once you go through this three-week wave is that your warm-ups feel crazy light. Because I haven't even put any weight on yet, and I'm already at 150 pounds. And so you start your workout already with somebody feeling like they're jumping on your back or pushing down, it makes you way stronger. And so that's one big thing. So the big thing is, is making sure that these are even and that you stay tight. Now, I will caution you, the front squat's the most dangerous by far. You're gonna wanna make sure that you got some legit spotters or have a way to get rid of the bar if you're front squatting with bands. When you take this band off in a front squat, your front rack position needs to be legit. And you gotta fight it the whole time. Stay up, head up, same way. And then rack. Now, when you get up to 200 pounds of band tension, you might only have like a quarter on the bar or a plate when you're maxing out. You have to constantly, constantly fight for, fight for position or this shit will bend you over quick. So uh, we've seen a couple of interesting things happen in the gym. You gotta be cautioned to have some spotters and if you don't have spotters, you gotta set yourself up in a rack that you know you can get rid of this thing without hurting yourself. Now, we'll put the green bands on so you can see a little bit more tension. Set it up like this, it sets 100 and a 90. Go under the barbell, under the dumbbells to get the correct loop. Come through like that. And then straight to the bar. Most people always say, well I want to do bands but I don't have anything in my gym to do that. Now you got no excuse because I've just done showing you how to do it. So like I said, this would be the week two of the way with the greens. I mean, your total investment, to me, getting that much stronger is worth it. And, so you're not fucking bored anymore, you get to do something new. All right, so this one, like I said, is up to 150. So, we'll get up under the bar, make sure it's even. Yeah, it feels even. Many step back, stay tight. Shoot through the bands, rack. And so really, you know, we just usually take like singles, doubles, and work on whatever the prescribed max effort is for that day and just kind of work up. Now, the cool thing is, it doesn't take as long as regular weight because you're not gonna be as strong. You're gonna have so much pressure on this bar, you might be like, <laughs> do this, four or five other sets and you might be done, which gives you plenty of time to go ahead and work on the other stuff that I've got set up. The last thing I want to show you is how you set it up for bench press because for a lot of you guys that have followed the bench most days plan, it was two days heavy pauses, two days light. We're keeping the two days light because it works extremely well, especially with the added extra shoulder work. The two days heavy now are going to be against bands and we're going to start off against either mini or monster minis. I have the monster minis today so I'll show you that way. So I'm going to go ahead and take this down and set up the bench for you guys so you can see it. Change the J-hooks real quick. If you notice, I have a monolift here. I have the bench set up with bands, but I went ahead and set you guys up with the most basic, basic way possible so I can show you how to do it in your own, in your basement, you know, at your own house, whatever, at your own gym. So once again, we're gonna set it up with the dumbbells. Now these dumbbells, you're gonna wanna have these down a little bit lower to mimic the bench groove. If you notice on your bench groove, it comes down into like high on, uh, on your first ab basically, jam it back over your chin. So we don't want it straight down like this. We want it to kind of, when you take it out, we want it to kind of mimic that bench groove of the band. So I'll move this down a little bit here. Once again, stay with the same kind of loop dumbbell wise. And these we double over. So we'll double like this. It's not just a single loop, it's two. And then onto the bar. Now these bad boys add you about a solid uh, 100 plus, 150 also. Get it up under. And this is called double up, doubled up monster minis. Now, 
I'm going to caution you. When you take this off, you could potentially eat the bar unless you stay tight. And what that means is don't take this bar out loose because you will eat it and it will hurt. You have to stay tight. And what that means is you have to get tight on the bench, get your lats engaged, get ready to take the bar out. And down, boom. If you see, see this right here? And I do this stuff all the time. It pushes against you so hard, you gotta load up your lats and press through fast. The bands will jump on you quick. You have to make sure, especially in this lift, that you have a spotter. You can't, you can't dump the barbell anywhere except for on your head. So once again, it's advanced. You double up these minis or monster minis, you need to have some help. You should have a good lift off guy. Try not just to grab a regular guy that has no clue what you're doing. Explain to the person, hey, take this off, you know, get a lift off, make sure you stay close to the bar. Don't hang on top of the bar, but make sure that you have somebody that knows what the hell they're doing because that's important or you'll get hurt. So the big thing about squat every day, 3.0, and bench most days would be 2.0, is you're adding band tension for a three week wave. You can buy the bands at Westside Barbell. You need a light, a medium, monster minis, and minis if you want. There's similar type conditioning as two, a little bit more hypertrophy work. You got the setup of all the main lifts between squat, bench, and deadlift that are prescribed, and you will 1,000% get stronger. My entire crew got stronger. The fourth week, which is the, you'll do three weeks of bands, and then you go back into the fourth week, which is just regular barbell maxes. It can be, you can follow the pattern from squat every day one or two, it doesn't matter everything and i'm telling you everything will feel light it's unbelievable so if you have any questions you can ask them here at the bottom of the show notes i'm going to put the whole program in the show notes so you can download it we're going to put it up on bodybuilding.com i appreciate all the hard work all the feedback and i know everybody's getting stronger including myself and i'm enjoying it and uh just keep supporting muscle farm i appreciate you guys thanks